uh, Mr. Uh, we're going to go forward on DC 209893 Moss v. Princip. Council, make your appearances. Royce Weston, Greg Cap here for the uh, plaintiffs. Gene DeBose for Defendant Bone. Leo Park for non party Google. Okay. Uh, so let's go forward with today's uh, anything that was previously said on the, today's docket. Yeah, Your Honor, uh, let, I need to ask a couple of questions before we get started. Mm -hmm. Has the court signed the order uh, that you put in place last week that we, we sent over to the court on Friday? The 21st is the day that uh, distributions are supposed to be made to the defendant. Mr. Park, you guys were supposed to give me some kind of uh, comments on that, and I haven't heard them. I haven't seen them. Uh, Your Honor, the last I heard is that our, our client said that the we can't stop the payment today in time. Uh, it, we need at least, I think they said like a, a week. Um, they could stop the next payment, the April 21st payment, but just in terms of timing, they, they don't have enough time to, to redirect those funds to a Google account store uh, in the two days or three days since uh, the hearing till now. Judge, out of all due respect, we've never had any testimony of any a representative from Google. The only thing we've had is statements from counsel. And again, uh, the court went through a lot of pain and torture, so to speak, in terms of putting this order together. We'd ask that it be filed, that it be signed. And if we need to visit with Google or their representatives subsequent to the sign signing of this motion, We'll do that and try to accommodate them as best as possible. But if we can't get the order signed today, then well, I, I, I'm going to sign it right now. I'll sign it right now. All right, Judge. Secondly, uh, I just think we need to get clarification on the availability of Brian Martin to testify. Um, you've indicated at a previous hearing that both Holly Bone Martin and Brian Martin would be able to testify uh, by Zoom. We want to make certain that we're real clear on what he will be able to testify to. The court ordered that um, a default judgment back on May 4th, 2021, and basically said that plaintiff's motion to strike judgment debtors Martin's original answer motion and motion for default judgment as to liability is granted. And so I think that the only matters that he would be able to testify to is testify as relates to damages. And we just need to make sure we get that straight so there won't be any confusion uh, as we go into trial. So first off, I'm gonna allow any witness who wants to testify via Zoom to testify via Zoom. So that, that I just wanna make that clear. I'm doing that in every case. I'm gonna right. do it in this case. Uh, and so uh, I'm gonna accommodate the, the parties on that. Mr. DuBose, what is the other, uh, as to Mr. Uh, Senator or Mr. West's other point, what did you, which, which other point with respect to what Mr. Martin can testify to? Yeah. Um, he will be testifying to a number of things. Uh, for example, his relationship with his wife as he was managing her channels, um, his history with her and knowledge about what was done. Uh, his memory is a great deal uh, better than my client's. Uh, so it will it will cover all those uh, kinds of things. So I, you know, I obviously he can't testify about the judgment against him, and I don't think he's going to. But you know he was he is a witness to almost everything that's before the court, and to so, deprive. So, so, so let me ask this: This is just kind of conceptually how this is going to work. <laughs> so there's a default judgment against Mr. Martin uh, in this case. That's the liability, correct. That's the liability. So how, how does that, on this particular case, if it was a car accident case or a, even a, you know, like a fraud case, I would get all of that. But on this case where Ms. Bone is taking the position that she owns this pro how is this going to work in, in practice in terms of the jury charge? How, how would this affect the jury charge? 
I don't see that it would affect the jury charge at all. The, the jury charge is going to be about Ms. Bone and uh, her ownership of the, of the videos and of the channel. And I, I don't think there's going to be any instruction with res respect to uh, Mr. Martin. I think in interest of not prejudicing the jury, uh, the fact that that order has been uh, that he has the judgment against him should not be mentioned to the jury. But when we get to the jury charges, he, he will be clearly omitted from them. Well, Judge, that's the very reason I'm bringing this up. He will not be omitted from it. I'm asking the court to make certain that the, that the jury knows that uh, he's failed to follow the direction of the court and the court's put him in contempt and uh, has basically said that his liability in this particular case has, in fact, uh, been established. Established what liability we're talking about. It will be an issue as to whether or not this is separate or community property, as an example. And so there needs to be some sort of charge that it's uh, presumed, not only presumed, but it is, in fact, his separate property based on what the court has done in terms of striking his uh, pleadings. Uh, there will be, so there will be some charging around separate and community property and his liability. That's the reason I'm bringing it up right now. I'm not sure about that. The, the testimony about, and there is going to be a family law issue here, uh, whether um, Ms. Bone's activities fall within that uh, category in uh, family law, which states that people who do things, create things on their own, not income from a business, uh, is exclusively uh, the property of the, uh, the person who does those creations and is not uh, susceptible to any of the liabilities of the spouse. Uh, we will, of course, go into the significance of that particular uh, uh, ruling, but I think we need a finding of fact from the jury on that issue. Um, and maybe some instruction. I, I, I agree that to Mr. DeBose, as the part of this, which is that just because there's a default judgment against Mr. Martin doesn't mean that that should exclude Ms. Bone from asserting any defenses that she has. Uh, and so, and, and this is not a ruling, but it does, I'm trying to think through this, which is what makes sense to me is that we would just have a, a question as to who owned the property? Because it's a claim that the claim is that Mr. Martin negligent or, or uh, fraudulently transferred the, the property. That's the claim, fraudulently transferred this property to Ms. Bone. Uh, so the question would be. With the default judgment, so the way I, I conceived of this is that there's two different questions. There's, did Miss Miss Bone or Mr. Martin ever own this property? And whatever the property is that we're going to deal with, and the second issue is, did he fraudulently? If he did, did he fraudulently transfer that to uh, Miss Martin? Uh, and so, uh, I agree with Mr. Debose. It's not fair to Miss Bone that she can't assert that she owned the property. But if she did, uh, if it is determined that Mr. Martin owned the property at any time, then because there's a default judgment against him, then the issue of fraudulent transfer should be established. That's conceptually how I'm thinking about it. It's not a ruling, but I think that's, is that kind of what you're trying to get at Mr. West or? Well, that's, what is your, that's exactly right, Judge. If the court has, um, establish liability against Mr. Martin, then a part of that liability, so to speak, as, as it relates to our pleadings, is a fraudulent transfer by him to Ms. Martin. The courts have set to establish it. You mean to Ms. Bone? Yeah, I'm sorry, to Ms. Yeah, Ali Bone, right, um, Martin. Uh, and so if the court has granted us a default judgment as to liability, Part of that liability is associated with our pleadings, which we pled fraudulent transfer. 
And so that's established. And we've got the default judgment against him. Now, logically, and I've been thinking about this for a while. Logically, if we have a default judgment against him in front of the transfer, then the question I had one in my mind, and never addressed this before, what does the jury need to be able to know concerning the default judgment and the liability? We want to make sure we have an adequate charge on that. And she, and she can assert whatever she wants. That's her right. But, yeah. So, so I, I can see two ways of doing this, and then I'll hear from Mr. DeBose. One is that we just decide the issue. Did Ms. Mr. Martin ever own any of this? And then that's all the jury decides. Did Mr. Martin ever own whatever the property we're fighting over, whether it's the channels? Did he ever own Wildcraft? Did he ever own these videos? You know, did he ever own any of this, pro the, these, the contested property? And then that's it. That's the only issue because we've already had a default judgment. We wouldn't need to bring up the default judgment because all they're deciding is this issue. If it comes in, if, if we're not going to do it that way, then I think the default judgment has to come in. But that, that's that's just kind of my thought. Mr. DeBose, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I think the whole thing comes down to who owned the channels, who owned uh, the videos. And once you decide that, you know, if, if you decide that uh, uh, Mr. Martin owned them, then uh, my client is up the creek without a paddle. But that's the one issue. And I don't know, you know, um, I'm on, <laughs> I think the charge conference here is going to be, uh, we'll pare this down very carefully. Uh, and I don't know whether we would have it um, a decision as to Mr. Martin and a decision as to Ms. Bone with two, uh, two separate uh, charges. Um, you know, my, I mean, I, 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 it, Mr. DeBose, it sounds like you guys, you, for once you and I are on the same page, which is good. It's nice to be on the same page. No, I, you know, I think when it comes down to the jury charge, we're not going to have uh, much difficulty because I, I know that there as far as I'm concerned there are only two issues in this lawsuit that we're going to try uh, and one is uh, who owned the channels and the uh, uh, I guess it's only one issue the channels well, yeah, who owned the, who owned the channels who owned the videos I think that's, yeah and, yeah, and, and massive, yeah. Massive question. the issue concerning fraudulent transfer that's an issue that's going to be decided by the jury too and again, well, Mr. West, that issue okay. that issue's already been decided. Okay. All right. So, so the, 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 the question is, is what type of charge would the jury get on fraudulent transfer? That's they shouldn't, the they shouldn't get any, I don't think, unless you're making a fraudulent transfer claim against Ms. Bone. Yes. Well, the, the, the reality Far. is that uh, two things as it relates to Mr. Martin, we're claiming that he fraudulently transferred the channels and videos also. And that was in the original plea. All right. And so there needs to be some consideration. And, and, and again, the court has to take this into consideration. And kind of yeah. But, but let, let me ask you this conceptually, Mr. Wide, I guess, is you the one who, who kind of, uh, how could Ms. Bone have fraudulently transferred I guess I just have a. How could she have fraudulently transferred something that owned that was owned by Mr. Martin? Well, but here's the deal, Your Honor. Mr. Martin fraudulently transferred it to uh, Miss Bone, and Miss Bone has now fraudulently transferred it to Wildcraft. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Very good right. point there. Okay. That's so what I thought about is that. that void, is that void at, at, at Benicio? Listen to me, Void Abinicio. I remember. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I, I think you guys need to think this through because I agree with you that as to any claims that are against Mr. Martin, those issues have been decided by default judgment. And uh, so I guess there's you know, two potential links here as to the videos. One is the transfer from, you're right, from, I think that's been decided that he, if, if, if he owned these this property, then the, you know, if he owned the, the channels or he owned the videos, then the was the transferred 
and, and, and he that's what the jury decides then the issue of whether or not the transfer to Ms. Bone is fraudulent, that's been decided by default judgment. But whether or not the transfer from Ms. Bone to Wildcraft was fraudulent, uh, that would be something the jury would need to decide, I think. that I think that makes perfect sense. But is that everything we need to talk about today or is there something else we need to talk about today? I know you have a million other motions coming up between now and we trial. Have, we, we do have uh, the motion for contempt. Your Honor, today it's at 10 o'clock. Corey Campy is having that time. Okay. But your, your Honor, it, I guess just to finish the whole order, the Google, before we get to that, could I just say two more things on the on Google's part on the uh, you know, the issues of the order and then we can get to the contempt? Or I can... Okay. I thought you guys didn't have any issues with the order. Do I need to go? I need to grab the order if you have an issue with it. Uh, well, I guess the, uh, this is the problem that Google's been having just generally. I guess I just want to reiterate the timing issue is that part of the reason we're having trouble with timing is that because the new order is only directed at the, the videos that were transferred from the old channel, uh, splitting that revenue up and only freezing part of the revenue is another difficulty that Google doesn't know how long. No, I, I, I was going to, I was going to stop all transfer. It would be the, that entire channel, all of Wildcraft would not be distributed. That's, that was what I was going to do. Uh, okay. Uh, that, 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 that's much easier for us. The other issue is that, we can redirect the funds. Again, timing is an issue, but we can redirect the funds, but uh, that redirecting the funds by itself would not prevent uh, Ms. Bone from going in and then changing where the fund, the next payment goes. Um, so what we could do is every month check what the system is set up to do uh, manually every month before each payment. But um, if we want her to give, the only way to prevent her from changing it in the interim, in the 30 days between each payment would be to freeze her out completely, which uh, is again, a more complicated endeavor. I don't know if that's necessary. We're happy I, to- I, I, my hope is that's not yeah. necessary that we'll have a decision on this case yeah. before then. That's, that's my hope. Okay, so let, let me go grab the order real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, I'm just going through the order real quick. Uh,
Okay, so I'm gonna set this temporary injunction on, uh, so I'm gonna sign the order here and the temporary injunction will be on April 4th at uh, 10 a.m. And... Your Honor, that's our trial day. The trial day. Or the day before. Yeah. I don't really have any other choice here, so. Uh, your, your Honor, we've we've filed uh, a number of objections to this proposed TRO, and um, I can, you know, I can share the screen. Now, I, I, I've looked at the objections on this case. Uh, I think this is fine. Uh, Your Honor, I guess Google's concern on the is on the last page. It says that uh, Google will not disperse the monetization revenue from the videos identified in Exhibit One, and that's that's one of the points. Is that it, it's easier for us if it's the entire channel? Okay, let me. Uh... Oh, you're right. It does say that. I'll just say from the Wildcraft YouTube channel. And then, uh, and then I'm not going to put it in the registry of the court, so I'll take that out as well. Okay, I've signed it and it will be sent in. Uh, all right. And Judge, we're looking forward to, we're, we'll continue to work with uh, uh, Michael Hirsch and his, his team as it relates to this issue. Okay. All right, so what was the other? I don't have the temp was set for today. Well, Your Honor, we had set a notice of, of hearing uh, on our motion for contempt and motion for sanctions against Ms. Martin for her actions after you orally granted Ms. the TRO. Ms. Bone, letter. you mean? I call her Ms. Bone Martin. Okay. Call she will prefer to be called Ms. Bone. That is her business. Um, just call her Ms. Name. Bone. She's been doing her, it her name in this years. lawsuit is Miss Bone, so just call Miss Bone. It, it'll be easier too because we already have a Miss Martin who's I think going to testify, so we'll just call Miss Bone. Uh, all right, uh, Mr. Dubose, were you ready to go forward today or not? I have filed a motion for continuance. Uh, there are not there are motions. Uh, there are aspects to these this motion. It is a motion uh, for violation of the three violations of orders of the court and a uh, seeking a um, sanctions. But every one of those uh, motions uh, is, uh, every aspect is uh, facially uh, delinquent. And I have filed motions to dismiss each one of those aspects and hearings have been set on those four motions. But the main thing is, you know, you cannot expect on four days notice uh, anybody to respond to contempt charges. You know, normally one files a request for a show cause order to which there may be responses, and then we get to, uh, to the contempt itself. Uh, every, so, I, I, I agree with Mr. DeBose this time. Uh, I, I think I don't want to hear it today. I don't. I think you need to do a show cause and give him an opportunity to purge the contempt. No, no, I, also I think a motion for sanctions. Whoa, 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 Mr. Capua. I'm sorry. I thought you were finished, Your Honor. I wasn't finished. You're usually good about that, so please don't do that again. Um, so, uh, what my thought is is first off. I think that the TRO kind of deals with this issue. We're, we're freezing this, this money 
I don't see a reason to really deal with this any more than that. And so if you do want to show cause, do a show cause order. But we're almost to trial. Let's focus on getting this case ready for trial is my recommendation. So I am going to continue this. I'm going to require a show cause order to be signed. And uh, let's get this case ready for trial. That's my feeling. So uh, I appreciate it, guys. Anything else today? That's it, Your Honor. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Judge. We will see you uh, on the, all these other motions you've said. And Mr. DeBose, I would encourage you to talk with the other side and see if we can just focus on what do we need to do to get this case to trial as opposed to fighting over all this other stuff. I didn't well, both sides. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking for those fights. They, they I know, brought them to I know. I, I know. Both sides, I'm encouraging you guys to do I, I'm, uh, I'm perfectly glad to drop all those motions if there are not going to be any motions like that coming back. I think that's fair. So good luck, guys. And uh, we'll see you uh, hopefully on the day of trial and not before. But well, I, I will... I, strongly encourage you guys to talk with each other on how this charge is going to look because I do think it's very complicated and we need to before we start this trial we should have some idea what the jury is going to be deciding so I would urge you to kind of focus on that issue as opposed to all these other ancillary issues anyway good luck guys and we'll see you in the next one Miss LaBeouf are you here